just wanted to show you why it's a good idea to have a cupboard at the bottom of your HF wire antenna. If we pan above, you've got a mast, open wire or ladder line, goes up to the antenna, which is about nine meters or so up actually might be a little bit more anyway it's a g5 rv about 15 meters aside if you just follow the wire that's the other end and then it just goes off to the tree down there with this arrangement it will work on 3.5 megahertz and various bands upwards but if you want 1.8 megahertz then you need to do something else this is the configuration on most of the HF bands antenna wire open wire or ladder line depending on what you want to do a ballon or for more flexibility an antenna coupler you could bring this into the shack and have this next to your transceiver or you could have it outside that's what I've got what I've got get in this box here and then the coax cable it can be any length going to the transceiver and for much lower frequencies like 1.8 megahertz then you're trying to load this as a vertical so you've got the two sides of the feed line tied together that wire it needs to be as horizontal as you can get it that provides some top loading you've got as good a ground system or radials as you can get and then you've got a matching network here and then at the end of your coax your transceiver that does mean that if you want to change bands from 1.8 megahertz to the others you need to come out here and do a manual changeover or you could get really ingenious and have some relays possibly even controlled by voltages going up your coaxial cable you can use capacitors and RF chokes to separate the DC from the RF but I haven't got any of that fancy stuff and 99% of the time it stays on this configuration here as to what this is well it's actually a child's play stove I must have had some spare paint because I painted it and then inside here which is meant to be the oven um, got all dirty and rain came in the top I just nailed that onto here because there are holes in the top so that should keep some of the rain out but this was originally the shelf the shelf was here anyway it had got buckled and it had fallen down to the bottom and I did want to have a shelf because I wanted to keep what I've got in here above a ground level here as uh, just you know a bit of dampness so instead luckily I had a bit of chopping board so that's provide a nice shelf just the right width this is what I used for 160 meters and here you've got the connections to the um, radials a few bits of wire as long as possible around the yard and then the other one I haven't got it connected but the other side that's where you connect the joined up bottom of the ladder line going up to the antenna and then there's turns of wire got a tap here and then the antenna socket so that's just a quick look at what could be a handy accessory to have at the bottom of your HF antenna even if it's a resonant dipole you could at least have one of these and have a network down at the bottom and, and then feed it as a vertical and that can get you capability on 
some of the lower HF bands, 160 metres, even 80 metres, if you've got even less room than I've got here. Every successful QRP outing needs a good antenna. To get some ideas, check out my books, hand-carried QRP antennas, and more hand-carried QRP antennas. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.